The work is a composition of circles. There is a big circle occupying almost the entire picture plane. The big circle is made up of a succession of circles or rings in gradated mauve hue. Each ring is defined by darker fuzzy outline, designating the very center of this large circular mauve composition is a fiery red orange circle enclosing a sketchy pink twirled line akin to a spiral. Further defining the immediacy of the large circle of mauve is the aura of light bluish tone that surrounds it and features a ball of violet hue, which then fuses with the deeper purplish hue forming the upper corners of the picture plane. It is only then that the viewer is made aware that the entire composition is formatted on a rectangular picture plane. Scattered along the groove of the large circle of mauve are smaller circular forms in varying sizes and values of black, some fuzzy and some of deeper tones. And so what do we make out of this untitled work produced in 1976 by Nena Sagil? Who was she? According to Art Philippines, edited by Gatbonton, Havelosa, and Roa, Nena Sagil, the artist, was a member of the Ney Realist group. Most of these artists from the 1950s to the 1960s went to Europe and the Americas to study under embassy scholarships or foundation sponsorships. Yearning to learn about new art trends in the West, Sagil went to Europe and America on her own funds. As related in the book, Art Philippines, Lid Argilia, the principal patron of the Neo Realists, established the Philippine Art Gallery, or PAG, in Ermita. PAG served as the meeting place as well as the exhibit venue for art productions by Neo Realists that included abstract art productions. As articulated by Argilia, the sole concern and subject of the neo realists was not the depiction of reality of objects and subject matter, but the relationships of the elements that make up the work. Applying the above principle and sole subject concern of relationships in Sagil's untitled work, we see multitude of relationships. Number one, that of a center and a periphery. Number two, of small size circles and large ones. Number three, of circles hugging the very central orange disc and those at the very outer rim, while one large circle is set precipitously outside the swirling mauve disc at the upper edge of the rectangular picture pane. Tones range from fuzzy violets to purplish gray and deep mauves to lighter pinky tones. Some relationships are agreeable, others create tension. As a whole, all the above elements are signifiers of one, of time, time in motion, in incessant movement, two, of power that is non-static but constantly changing, and three, of position that can be variable near the orange bright center or at the edge or outside of the big circle. Signified in its entirety as realities in society, particularly apparent in societies where there are social classes, where relations are exploitative and oppressive, such as the feudal relations of landlords and the peasantry, or the relations between capitalist bureaucrats and the workers, and relations in the world capitalist system where there are the powerful countries and the multinational companies dictating and directing the lives and entire system of seemingly independent countries but in actuality are simply pawns, markets, and sources of raw labor and materials for their industries. Similarly, such imagery of patron-client relationship is what the country name 
Cho Goku signifies. Written in kanji or Chinese characters, the two kanji characters translate to center of the universe, referring to the power wielded by the emperors from the tongue to the chin over tributary states, particularly those immediately around it. Such unequal relations were disrupted and even turned around during the invasion and rule by the Japanese imperial forces and by European imperialists until the 1940s. Just as what is depicted in the work by Sagil, time, power, and position are fluid and in constant change as these are constant movements and struggles among us contending forces. In the traditional arts, such as in textiles, the work by Sangil brings to my mind the binakul, which is of similar concept, a swirling force in incessant movement. The binakul design is composed of squares and rectangles of gradated sizes and in positive and negative hues, such as positive red and black and negative white, positive blue and black and negative white, or positive green and black and negative white. The imagery depicted is a whirlwind or whirlpool in perpetual motion with its centrifugal force at the very deep center. Except for the completely symmetrical composition in the binacool, the imagery of a centrifugal force swirling incessantly strongly echo Sangil's work. In terms of relationship of elements, Sangil's work also recalls the large woven square cloths, the pisyabit of the Taosub and the saputangan of the yakan, composed of geometric forms of bright colors. Both the pisyabit and the saputangan depict a center or a large central motif from which radiate smaller motifs of diamond forms or rectangles within square formats. For the pisyabit, the central motif is a representation of the Bud, or high mountain, where the gods reside and therefore sacred. Highly geometricized forms representing the natural environment, such as the surrounding waters, fishes, and the sea weeds, and the land vegetation of plants and flowers, plus the surrounding space represented by birds and butterflies, are laid out in interesting composition and gradated sizes. Those near the periphery are the smaller ones. All the design forms contained within the design units of squares and rectangles are contiguous to one another, at once radiating from the central axis and at the next moment grouping towards the center. Similarly, Sangil's composition depicting a center and a periphery also shows affinity to the mandala, the painted, illustrated diagram and silk of the diamond world and the womb world in esoteric Buddhism. These are more particularly seen in the mandala of the womb world, which illustrates the concept of relationships in a material world. At the very center of the square ground is the Dainichi Buddha, which is the supreme god of light, the sun god. The central figure is surrounded by secondary saints or figures, and as one goes out of the center and towards the periphery of the square formatted illustration, the figures become smaller in size and hues diminish in tonal value. The one at the very center is the biggest and the brightest, while those at the periphery are tiny and dimly depicted. The womb world mandala attracted much devotion from the aristocrats of the Heian period. The aristocrats identified themselves with the figures directly or near the vicinity of the central figure, which is the Dainichi Buddha, the god of the shining light, the sun god equated to the emperor who is believed the direct descendant of the sun god. Both in terms of design concept and in the express representation of power at the center and the main pivotal force, and its diminished force at the periphery, the mandala resonates in the untitled work by Sangil.
We can also relate this work by Nena Sangil to the architectural design and layout of the Temple of Heaven, which was constructed during the Ming Dynasty and completed in 1420 during the reign of Emperor Tongle. It features a circular mound of white stone set on the very center of a perfect square that is elevated on a three-tiered grid. The round flat stone representing the heart of heaven is where the emperor prayed for assistance from heaven for good governance of the mortal world. Another structure known as the Hall of Prayer for Good Harvest is set on a perfect square and approached from all four sides and three-tiered pathway. On the very center of the triple roof pagoda structure is where the ritual prayers for bounty and harvest are enacted by the emperor. The ground plan, layout, and structures which represent the Chinese pursuit of harmony between heaven and mortals are echoed with more agitation and vibrancy in Sangil's multi-groove circular composition where dots of varying sizes and tones spin incessantly around the fiery orange circle at the center, the central source of energy. Reverence to the gods is also expressed in the 8th century Hindu-Buddhist architecture plan and layout of the Burbudur, similarly set on a square ground format and approach from four cardinal directions, the central structure is elevated on three tiers where smaller stupa groupings are arranged. This principle in temple layout and structure where the most sacred structure is placed at the center and on the highest elevation can be gleaned in the temples in Myanmar and Cambodia as well. Hierarchy and centrality of the most sacred or emanating the brightest light or energy are the principles echoed by the temple structures and layout as very clearly expressed in Sangil's artwork. Honestly, when I first had a glance at this work by Nena Sagil with the fiery hued center and circular black marks scattered along the grooved rings, I saw it as a target shooting board and almost instantaneously my mind streaked through memory lane, recalling the narrative a former professor was apprehended and detained in the mid-70s. He went through torture Several times he was brought to a target shooting area and was made to stand before a target shooting board, his head there directly fronting the board. And then the shooting would begin every second and every shot, making a zipping sound as a bullet ripped through the air and made a sharp sound as it went through it. All these were tortuous to him. Intentionally or not, he was not being hit at all and the bullets could be just blank ones. Yet, even decades after, when the professor recalled those harrowing periods in detention, we could see profuse perspiration rolling down his face. It was harrowing for us listeners and much more tortuous for him to even recall those years. In a lighter, brighter thought, Sangil's work brings to mind The Dance by Henry Matisse, 1909 to 1910 although in more muted tonal values. The circular composition and the sprightly figures in the dance echoed the swirling circle and reddish mode tones in Sangil's work. Indeed, this work by Nena Sangil can signify a wide, deep horizon of meanings with the viewer's thoughts having a dialogic interaction with the peace. And finally, this work by Nena Sangil has reference to the solar system. Yes, it is so, with the sun at the very center in fiery orange hue, surrounded by planets or stars depicted in various sizes and tonal value, and follow a certain grid or pathway. Indeed, this is realism in this untitled work by Nena Sangil.